Welcome to Hot Topics in International Trade, brought to you by Braumiller Law Group and Braumiller Consulting Group. Hi, this is Bob Brewer with Braumiller Law Group, Braumiller Consulting Group. Welcome to the podcast. Today with me, I have Brindita Cordova. She's an intern here with Braumiller Law Group this summer, and some of you may know her mother, Brenda Cordova. Say hi, everybody. Brindita. Hi, everyone. I'm Brenda. Well, as Bob said. No, yeah. We, we got to separate the two. Okay, Brindita. <laughs> yeah. Brindita. But uh, I tell you what. So she's actually going to give us a little insight. This has been interesting because I've been chatting with her during this internship. Uh, she's going to school in Mexico to become an attorney, just like her mom. <laughs> but the beauty of this is that when I went off to college, I had to take two more years of gen ed. And I'm thinking to myself, I know I want to be in marketing. I know what I want to do with my life. Why am I having to take this algebra course? Okay, this is crazy. In Mexico, it's different. You go straight into your field. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, actually, uh, when you get out of high school, you go straight into college uh, with the idea of what you want to become. So when you choose your career, you get straight into it. And you do like, uh, it depends on the career. You can do like maybe four or five years. And the thing is that you don't have to take like any um, general subjects, like as you said. Yeah. I mean, you start from the first semester. Well, at least in my school, you start to take like like the subjects related to your, to your career. And like, even though they are like um, very general, like you don't, go straight into like I don't know labor law or right. stuff like that you go um, through the history like the basis of everything mm -hmm. but still like from the beginning you only um, are focused on your career so you actually have like a very good advantage I say yeah, absolutely. because yeah because for example I uh, got into college when I was 17 so by 22 I'm gonna be a lawyer and I have friends that at 16 were in college and at 22, like, they're going to be architects, um, lawyers, um, mm -hmm. like, everything. Yeah. Yeah. We get out of school and we're like, how the heck am I going to get a job now? But the beauty of this, too, so you've got one heck of a mentor in a mom. I mean, and you're here. We're giving Brindita kind of a taste of what it's like to be in a law firm like Brahma the Law Group on a day-to-day -day basis. She's getting involved with, you know, some of our calls that we've got coming in from prospective clients. I got her working on a project with mom on the IMAX, you know, marketing to down on the board. She's been involved. She's my TikTok queen. I'll show you some TikToks. I'll put them on at the end of this video that she's my TikTok queen now. But, you know, when you do this research, I mean, it's, this is the way to learn. I mean, you, we just did one. Let's give them the title. So one was on the American, the, I mean, the president now. What's her name? Yeah, uh, Claudia Sheinbaum. Claudia Sheinbaum. Sheinbaum, yep. yeah. Uh, yeah, so actually I've been working on some TikToks, and, uh, well, you you will be able to see them. Yep. And as I was doing them, I, well, I needed to do some research. So I think that it's a very interesting way to learn mm -hmm. and then to put it into practice, which is like uh, creating scripts and like making everything sound correctly because also it's very important like not to give any like uh, information that might be like incorrect. Well, the translation sometimes can yeah. be a little bit different between, <laughs> yeah. between Spanish and, yeah. and, and English. Uh -huh. I get that. Yeah. I get that. And, no. Oh, I'm here to edit. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. And yeah, well, like... Uh, it has also been very helpful to me to like um, being around in a firm like this, mm -hmm. like to get the the insight mm -hmm. and the experience uh, has been very like um, I could say like eye opening because uh, well it's very different from like what I've seen in Mexico and here like uh, being able to get introduced into an environment like of like a uh, real work. And like seeing how it is, how the work, mm, I could say like strategy, like how mm -hmm. different it yeah. is from Mexico, like even from the, from the schedules, like the dress code, like the way they work with each other, like how everyone, since 
I mean, since I know that it's like a small law firm, like yeah. how everyone like helps each other with uh, every single case and like how it's very supportive. So I think that... Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and we're loose a little bit. I mean, we're not that stuffy law firm by any stretch. So you get to go to a little party tonight, you know? Mm -hmm. little, we always have these little pizza parties at Brad's house, our, our president of the consulting group. He's our social director. Shout out to Brad. But, you know, so what's been the most eye-opening thing so far in your summer or your, your, this week? Mm, I think that just, like, seeing the the daily in an office, like, it's something that I've never seen before. Like, seeing how uh, the professionals are able to work with clients, like, from other parts of the world, like, from uh, a place or, like, even work from home. Like, I think that that has been, like, very wide opening because sometimes you have the idea that as a lawyer you have to work, like, uh, in an office, like, from a 9 to 5 and, like, being with a all dressed up when in a suit and everything. So. No, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, can work, uh -huh. you can work remote. You yeah. can wear what you want. You, yeah. You know, uh -huh. my, my sweatpants and a shirt, that's my, my daily for the most part. Yeah. But uh, I do have an office in the office, but I do work from home as well. I mean, yeah. I don't get interrupted that way. But the beauty of this, too, is that not only with, with Moms and Mentors, because we are grooming Brandita here to be part of our Mexico legal counsel on down the road. So she's really getting a good grasp, a hold on what's actually going on. Uh, one of the things that she's done with the TikTok was the foreign direct investment. That was interesting for you to find out how it's, you know, China, you know, companies wanting to move into the IMAX that are building warehouses are getting involved with it because they got to get around Section 301, forced labor, anti-dumping, countervailing. And so you're right there. You know, you guys even have the opportunity to go visit some of these uh, IMAX, you know, Mom knows a heck of a lot about it, and that's to your advantage because you go back after this. You're going to know more than any other kid in your class. <laughs> you will. You'll be able to talk to your teachers about, hey, I've done this on a daily basis now. i got a pretty good idea. Then the other thing that was interesting you were telling me the other day, you don't really pick your classes as you go back. They get picked for you. You pick your instructors. Yeah. Well, actually, in my school, that is the system. So you get like the offers of the professors and like the hours that they're going to give. So you have to create your own schedule that adjusts to your, well, to your daily routine. So you have to pick the professor, but you cannot choose like what subjects do you want to take because the schedule is already given. You just have to like um, do like put them yeah. with the subjects like in the hour that you will want to take right and and, yeah. and i would see when you told me that i always thought of like what we've got here in the united states people look at companies that they may or may not want to work for it's called glass door so if if there's really something that you want to know from the inside scoop of people who have worked there kind of you know you go to glass door same thing i would want to be looking at these professors now you said there's a social media app or something in mexico that these kids look at to see should i really pick this professor is it the right decision here you know? Yeah, actually, it's like uh, like a public platform which where you can like ask like how is the class of the professor like uh, their teaching methods and everything. Yeah. So it's very interesting to like where you can just like post like uh, can you give me recommendations about like this professor like people will tell you their like their experience. So that is also very uh, complicated I'd say because it depends on like the. Well, like the personal experience of each person. Yeah. So most of the times you are choosing your professor like based on what other people tell you. So. Yeah, like he's 82 years old and he likes to sleep. <laughs> and yeah. all he does, <laughs> yeah. he's got tenure, call it that, you know. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. But no, wait, let's back up. So, but these professors are kind of like not full-time, part-time. They're actually doing this. Not a lot of money in it for them. No, and that's actually very interesting because, well, at least on my school, I get to have, uh, as professors, like, very important people, like, people who work in politics, people who are, like, full-time lawyers, and they are just, like, giving classes as, uh, well, because it's their passion or they love to teach. So it's very interesting because since they are, like, practicing, like, like they are up-to-date with, like, everything that's going on, uh, you get, like, the actual information, like, they can give you their experiences of, like, recent cases, and, like, they teach you how to apply the apply the law mm -hmm. to, like, the current situations. So I think that that is also very good for us because, I mean, in each subject, 
there's like very good professors that can teach you on a way that will make you want to change your mind like if you want to dedicate to labor law or like um the law for i don't know like accidents mm -hmm. like for the families and everything so if you get a good professor on a subject like that can help you like change your mind and see like what do you really want to become but you and i i mean we had talks about this like what three years ago i got in your area of conference that you've got to be able to take advantage of mom as a mentor you know that's one smart cookie there as mom and so look what she's done and look what you can do mm -hmm. so you know as soon as you get out of college you got a job you know, yeah. Well, well, part of you're part of the Mexico, you know, legal counsel for Bromley Law Group. Do you want to go down that road? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's very well. I'm very grateful that I have someone as my mom as a mentor because, like, she's very experienced, and the fact that this is a subject that it's like not very, uh, I'd say, like uh, exploited mm -hmm. in Mexico. Like that is like still something that has not been like very. Like, well, that's okay. It's not out there as a priority for <laughs> yeah, like, uh -huh. school right now. Yeah. So, for example, in my school, they do not offer the subject of like customs law or anything related. So, I think that uh, having the opportunity to have like my mom and even Francisco, like Francisco de la Cruz, <laughs> yeah, our like of counsel, yeah, yeah, like uh, being able to like see what they do on a daily basis and like how they work, how they help companies, how they help clients, like that has been very helpful to me because that has helped me decide what I want to do which is like trade and customs law I mean like even I still I am not done with school but I with all of what I've done I found it like really interesting well, no no you get to travel yeah you know like we were up at a conference recently with ICPA up in mm -hmm. Toronto beautiful city yeah, yeah, yeah it you, was. So you guys stuck around after we left had to come back you were up there another three days yeah see that's that's another part of it too you really get to get that's eye-opening I think yeah. being an international trade, you really got to get out there and see what's going on, traveling through Europe and Asia, and just that to me has been a great experience. Yeah, I mean, also the fact that you get, well, as a young person, the fact that you get to travel and, like, meet with other professionals, yeah. like, from all the parts of the world, like, that is also very inspiring, I say, because mm -hmm. you get, like, a whole different point of view of, yep. like, how a law can change in, like, every part of the world, so yep. I think that is also like very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Well, Brindita, I got. I like to keep these to about fifteen minutes. Okay. But uh, it's great to have you on as an intern. I think you're doing a heck of a job, and mm -hmm. love to have you. And what two years left of school? Yeah, I still have two years. Two years two left. Years. Yeah. All right, we're gonna keep grooming you <laughs> for the next two years. By the time you get out there, you're gonna be hit the ground running. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Sure. Okay. What is the position of the new Mexican government in near Sharing? On July 2nd, Chavez and Bampardo was selected as the first woman in Mexican history to become president, taking over the place of Andrés Manuel López Obrador. There are similarities in the governance, as both of them belong to the Morena party. Trade was a hot topic during the election process, since Mexico has become a popular spot for foreign direct investment. This has made people wonder how she plans to manage the growth of the near Sharing phenomenon, as Mexico is expected to receive over $40 billion in investment for nearshoring during the fiscal of 2025. But let's go back. What is nearshoring? Well, it is a strategy where a company moves their production close to their target markets in order to reduce cost. This has placed Mexico in the list of top 10 exporting countries at $563 billion. But now, what is Claudia's position in all this? Well, she has stated that she plans to continue to incentivize the relocation of companies into Mexico while protecting the workers' rights, offering them fair salaries. Since the last political parties had only sold the idea of Mexico being a cheap labor country, which according to her, is dehumanizing. Additionally, she has said that she wants these new investments to meet environmental standards and making a rational use of the natural resources. Therefore, the relocation of companies must be made strategically according to the regions, adapting to the resources that these locations have to offer. On the other hand, another of her focuses will be on the small and medium businesses, which over the past few years have not received any benefit from these new investments. Moving on, the plan is to offer them access to credits and proper training in order to introduce them to the supply chains. Currently, some of the biggest challenges that the near is facing in Mexico are the lack of sufficient infrastructure, 
Also, the lack of security for logistics operators, ethics violations, among other factors, will lead to concrete remedies being put in place. Still, Claudia won't take place as president until October 1st of this year, with her full term running until 2030. So there's still plenty of time to see how she will manage to handle this new phenomenon and the results of her implementations. Who is Marcelo Ebrard and what will be his role in Mexico's international trade? On July 20, Marcelo Ebrard was appointed by the recently elected Mexican president, Claudia Sheinbaum, to be the new Secretary of Economy for the upcoming government starting on October 1st. This was a hot topic for international trade, since one of his main challenges as the Secretary of Economy will be handling the USMCA revision, which will take place on 2026. According to him, a renegotiation is not necessary, since the treaty has been working out well. He also mentioned that he was present during the 2018 renegotiation, while Donald Trump was president of the United States, so he claims that he will be prepared for any outcome concerning the upcoming U.S. election. However, it is important to remember that the results of this U.S. election could affect Mexico's trade with Canada and the United States in various ways. Another of the challenges that he will face as Secretary of Economy will be handling the commercial relation between Mexico and China, since there has been a substantial growth in the foreign direct investment from this country into Mexico. On the other hand, he also claims that due to the conflict between the U.S. and China, the U.S. needs Mexico help to compete against China. It will be politically challenging to say the least, but Mexico has always positioned itself as non-aggressive. Marcelo states that Mexico has the resources to continue growing as a strong economy. However, it is just a matter of time to see the results that his performance as Secretary of Economy may bring into Mexico's status in the global scale of international trade. The Biden administration is now imposing tariffs to steal an aluminum ship from Mexico that was made elsewhere, in an attempt to stop China from avoiding import taxes by routing goods through one of the United States' closest trading partners. The tariffs will be added to steel and aluminum products under Section 232, with an increased rate of over 25%. Obviously, the reason for this is to stop the circumvention of the tariffs, but also to send a strong message to China, that the U.S. will continue to stay with its domestic industries and is watching all importations closely. Now, a solid U.S. partnership with Mexico comes into play. With the help of the Mexican government, new policies have been established, which state that only steel and aluminum products which have been melted and poured in Mexico, the United States, or Canada will be able to enter the U.S. territory duty-free. This will represent a challenge for the Mexican maquiladora industry, since according to Torres Layandía, the president of the Mexican Border Business Block, these companies have as their main income the steel and aluminum industry, and these companies represent over 48% of the employment among border cities. This is crucial, since over the last year there has been a loss of over 10,000 jobs. He also added that most of the Mexican companies do not produce this product, since most of the raw materials are extracted from other parts of the world, and then they are brought into Mexico to manufacture the steel and aluminum bars. Therefore, adjusting to these new measurements could be complicated for the companies, since they may have to initiate entirely new production procedures or even make changes in their supply chains in order to be compliant. Finally, all parties concerned will have to make adjustments to their operations in order to avoid any penalty as well as the unwanted tariffs implemented by the government. Relax, we've got you covered. Global trade compliance to us is just another day at the beach.